Hey, it's Mike here, and today, more ways that your body changes on a vegan diet. There are things I didn't cover in part one that I want to cover in this one, and there are new studies that have come out, and there are elaborations on those changes from part one that are super interesting, all in the realm of weight loss and the gut biome and disease and so on. And like part one, we're gonna look at a lot of studies, so I just wanna manage some expectations and mention that the numbers in the study, like any weight loss or drop in something, is not automatically definitely gonna certainly happen to you. These are just averages from the studies. Change number one, your hair will get messy and your beard will turn red. Right off the bat, one thing that really is the root of a ton of diseases is inflammation. As these studies mention, inflammation plays a key role in heart disease, it plays a role in Alzheimer's, ALS, acne, the list goes on virtually every disease you can think of. In part one, I mentioned that you would not have the inflammatory effects of eating animal products, but let's actually look at studies that quantify this. This study not only found that grabbing a vegan off the street will show you that they have lower levels of inflammation than omnivores, but it took omnivores, put them on a vegan diet, and watched their inflammation markers drop by a third in just three weeks. This inflammation marker is C-reactive protein, which is considered a general marker for disease, and it also activates your immune response, so not something you want to have a lot of. Fun fact, C-reactive proteins have a half-life of 18 hours, which means half of them are gone 18 hours after production. So to keep your levels elevated, you would have to be doing some repeat damage, like maybe three times a day. Get it? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> hey -o! Not funny, unsubscribed. But I think the takeaway here is that having one third less inflammation has major general implications for somebody's health. It's a major advantage when fighting any disease, it's huge. All right, now for the popular topic of weight loss. Since part one, this landmark study came out in the journal Nature. It showed that a whole food vegan diet is likely the most effective eat as much as you want diet for weight loss ever recorded, comparable to stomach shrinking surgery. After being put on a vegan diet, participants lost an average of 24 pounds over six months, which amounted to about four inches off their waist on average. That's huge, or small, whichever way you wanna look at it. But I have to mention some other findings like medications. Well, the control groups, medications went up as they tend to do nowadays. The vegan group was able to reduce their medication by about a third over a year, which is huge. Now this is a video about how your body changes on a vegan diet, but how do bodily changes affect your mental and emotional states? Well, this study also looked at that. At the six month mark, they reported increased quality of life and also increased self-esteem, which to me is such a big deal because that's why these people go on these crazy fad diets which are generally not healthy, but in this case, they got healthier, their cholesterol lowered, and many other biomarkers improved. And I have a whole video on the ins and outs of that study, so you can go check that out if you're interested in the details. Moving on, I'm always interested to see how the vegan gut is different. In the last video, I mentioned that there's less inflammation and that it shifts to an enterotype that is less disease promoting, but there's some other interesting details I didn't get to. One is in the realm of phytates. One criticism of the vegan community, often by the paleo community, because it's part of their narrative, is that vegans eat too many phytates and phytates are harmful because they bond to certain minerals like zinc. Most people can't really digest phytates very well. This study actually took people of different diets and got samples of, you guessed it, their poop. You didn't guess it? Well, whatever. And then they added phytates to that to test the microbiome and see how well it digested phytates. Well, quote, it was the vegetarian's microbiota that particularly degraded up to 100% of the phytate. How do these videos always end up about poop? Whatever, the point is that once that phytate is degraded, it no longer bonds with minerals, it's no longer phytate. And you might be thinking vegetarians are different than vegans. I even mentioned that in a previous video, which is why I don't like to apply vegetarian studies to vegans, but in this case it is pretty applicable because, quote, a diet rich in phytate increases the potential of intestinal microbiota to degrade phytate. It is likely that vegans eat even more phytate rich foods like those legumes and whole grains, but that concern that vegans should eat more zinc, for example, because the phytate bonds with it, might not have merit after all. All right, moving on from that, a hormone that I'm always talking about is IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one is implicated in a lot of diseases from things as simple as acne to how it can fuel cancer in high levels. 
For example, people with Laren syndrome, which is a genetic condition where your levels of IGF-1 are super low, they essentially don't get cancer. Well, here's a study done at Oxford that looked at almost 100 vegans, 100 vegetarians, and 100 omnivores. And while the omnivore and vegetarian levels were about the same, the vegans had lower levels of IGF-1 by about 13%. Because pretty clear that animal protein boosts IGF-1 above normal levels, the study found a correlation between animal protein consumption and higher IGF-1 levels. And as the study mentions, quote, Two dietary intervention studies have found a dairy milk supplement to cause a 10% increase in serum IGF-1 levels among adults. So this is definitely one of those areas that distinguishes vegans from vegetarians. This might explain why vegans generally have lower levels of overall cancer, and in terms of hormone-dependent cancers particularly, in the case of the Adventist studies, vegans had about 30% lower female cancer rates, while the vegetarians actually had the highest level of the three groups presumably because of the increased dairy consumption. One fun change for men on a vegan diet, you might just get more manly. This study found that vegans had higher levels of testosterone. The levels were higher than both vegetarians and omnivores, and as the study mentions, these results did not support the hypothesis of bacon though trolls that eating meat makes you manly and that vegans have lower levels of testosterone. Fine, that's not exactly how the study put it, but moving on to a benefit fit for vegan women in terms of their monthly cycle. From this trial, the vegan diet reduced menstrual pain duration and intensity. Shifting now to the topic of diabetes, another physical bodily change which is very interesting is that of intramyocellular lipids or simply fat inside your muscle cell. As this study co-authored by Neil Bernard that I mentioned in my last video states, intramyocellular lipids are strongly associated with insulin sensitivity, which is of course a key factor in diabetes. This fat actually gums up the insulin cells, which impedes your body's ability to respond to sugar and creates insulin resistance, makes your insulin less effective. The study then goes on to mention reports of vegans having 31% lower levels of intramyocellular lipids than omnivores. Yes, the study they mentioned here actually used MRIs to measure how much fat was in the muscles of vegans versus omnivores. The vegans not only had much lower levels of intramyocellular lipids, they also had some better biomarkers overall, and the fun part, all while eating more carbs. This is very counter to the mainstream carbophobia, and zooming out into the bigger picture, this coincides with population studies like the Adventist one that showed that vegans had 78% lower risk of all diabetes. 78%! That's ridiculous. All right, now I wanna take some time and make some predictions about some things that have not yet been specifically studied that I think possibly will be in the future, some changes in that realm. And they're all kind of around this study that I mentioned in part one by Dr. Caldwell Esselstein showing that a whole food vegan diet rapidly reverses heart disease, unclogs arteries, and its implications. Though it wasn't specifically studied, several men in his trials mentioned that their erectile dysfunction had reversed, which makes sense because as all the studies in my video on the subject mention, erectile dysfunction is often a case of a clogged penile artery. I also have a video on how this applies to women and clogging their genitalia. And this just has to do with the entire vascular tree. Down to your joints, I have a video on atherosclerosis and back pain, but it can even affect other joints like your knees and your elbows. And I think we're gonna see a lot more research on that in the future. Another implication is those fine arteries becoming unclogged on the surface of your skin and how that might affect skin conditions and the fine blood vessels in your eye. That actually has been studied already on a more extreme vegan diet, Dr. Walter Kempner's rice diet, where they found that they were able to, in many cases, reverse diabetic retinopathy, which is largely caused by clogged vessels in your eyeball people were able to see again. But what I'm really trying to get at here is that as you unclog that entire vascular tree, there are gonna be benefits that we haven't even thought about yet. You know, in terms like athletic performance with your lungs, getting blood flow there. I've talked about this before to your brain. I have a whole video on Alzheimer's and clogged arteries in your brain and the list goes on. It's endless. A lot of these changes really are some of the things that turned me vegan. I wish I could say I was completely selfless and wasn't blinded by my own habits to the point where animals would be able to turn me vegan, but it was this stuff, the health stuff. 
But I would say it's an awesome thing to care about your body. Good on you for watching this and caring about your body. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to make a part three of this as more studies come out. I will see you next time. Feel free to like and subscribe and all that jazz. And I just hit 100,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. Thanks to everybody who shared my videos and liked and commented and all that stuff. And coming out with an ebook hopefully next month, which will be cool. I can get some recipes, much suggested recipes to you guys. And everybody on Patreon who helped me keep making these videos and stick with it to this point. That's teamwork. Thanks and see you next time.